Webster defines prime as a state or time of greatest strength, vigor, or success in a person's life. And here you are as a 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grader. You're in the prime of your life. That's you. What's up? This is real love. This is real love. Maybe the very circumstances that you think got to change or got to improve before God's going to be able to do anything, maybe they're like the very ones that God wants to use to do something more epic or significant or beautiful than you ever thought possible. prayed all summer long is that in 10 years you'll be able to say that I chose life to the fullest maybe the prom life is only found when you take your life and place it in the best hands and the best hands are the hands of the one who created you to have the prom life Yeah. Please do not try that where you're standing. Uh, as you can tell, we had an awesome week here at uh, Panama City Beach, Florida, at Big Stuff. This is the fourth year that we've been a part of that. Uh, that right there was a little bit of a youth minister challenge, um, so I had to get up there. That lady in front of me was hogging the stage, and she clearly was out of line, so I had to kind of step in front and take over. Um, but uh, it was an awesome week for our teenagers and adults that went. Um, you guys are going to have the opportunity to hear from them in a couple of weeks on Youth Sunday, August 14th. They're going to be able to tell you their stories from this past week and some of the things that happened. Um, I'll just tell you that it's very, very cool to be in a situation where you're on a beach in a hotel in a convention center, 1,500 students, middle school and high school, representing 15 states. 
around the country. Mm-hmm. And to be that kind of interaction in the mor- you know, for three or four days is pretty awesome. Uh, it gets loud, it gets crazy at times, uh, but some of the best times are like what you saw when the students are out on the beach and they have their quiet time devotionals and, and whatnot. Um, and then our small group time, you know, I'm really thankful to our adults that went, um, Crystal and Susan and Todd, Alan and uh, Taylor that went as well. And um, just, just uh, had an awesome, awesome week. And um, so thank you for everything that you did to help us get there. Thank you for all the, the, the time and efforts that you spent to supporting our young people and getting us there and really making a big difference and an impact in their life. If you have a youth or if you are a youth and you have not gone to Big Stuff yet or you didn't got to go this year, you need to go. Plain and simple. I can't paint it any clearer. You need to go. Because video actually doesn't do it justice. It really doesn't. The video does not do it justice. It gets you a good idea, but it doesn't do you until you're there. When you get out there in the middle of a 1,500 students at 1030 on a Thursday night and do an hour straight of just praise and worship, no script, no nothing, just, just giving it all to God. It is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. So thank you so much. Please be in prayer for our youth because we keep the cycle going. Uh, several of them are going to turn right around, and this week we're leaving tomorrow to go to Emerge over in Greenwood where they'll have the opportunity to take what they received there in Florida and go and give it out to the other people, which is what I love. Not only do they get to take it in, but they get to go out and share it and give it to other people's lives. And they're able to go out and do various mission works around Greenwood this week. So please be in prayer for them as they'll be doing that. As I said, August 14th is going to be Youth Sunday. We'll have an opportunity to share some more videos and pictures from Big Stuff, have opportunity to have testimonies from Emerge. We have a couple of kids already that are ready to speak. I mean, they've blown up my phone and said, I got something I got to say. I said, well, I know where my microphone is, man. We'll get you there, brother. Um, so I'm excited about that. Also, that August 14th is going to be a back-to-school worship service. And if you're a teacher and a student, that's going to be a special time for you to be able to come. Students are going to be asked to bring their book packs, uh, backpacks, and we're going to be able to pray. Teachers especially, we're going to be able to encourage you that Sunday. So that's going to be, please mark that down if you have it, August 14th, Sunday. Make sure you're here for that. Um, if you're have not been here in a while, or if you're wanting to know why all the hustle and bustle is going on out in the hallway, we're in the middle of our In His Steps ministry fair. And if you have not signed up, there are plenty of tables and plenty of opportunities out there for you to go out and serve within the church and to serve out not only inside the walls but outside the walls as well. And this is the cool thing about this is that this is open to everybody. This is open to adults, youth, and children. My man Chase Henderson said he wanted to be part of the, uh, the upkeep for the, for the sanctuary. He wants to be you know, an acolyte. He wants to do all this stuff. So, I mean, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. You have an opportunity to serve. Please make sure that you go by those tables. We'll have uh, one more Sunday next Sunday where you'll have a chance to sign up. There is a box right out front that you can put your forms in if you want to fill those out. And um, like I said, it's a great opportunity. Um, also, there's a note to, be, uh, to a correction in here. New Beginning Circle. Um, we're having a meeting tomorrow at 6.30. It's actually going to be at the house of Sharon Hughes. Um, so just make a note of that, ladies. Also, they'll be having a barbecue plate sale. Um, Janice is going to be selling tickets outside uh, after the service. But the barbecue plates will be available before August 19th, right out here before the Abbeville 96 football game. So if you would like to help out New Beginning Circle, see Janice. Janice, wave your hand. And she can get you hooked up with tickets that you need for that. Also, if you are a man and you are willing and able and capable of being here next Sunday morning, we will have our men's prayer breakfast and invite you to come to that. Always a good time of fellowship with our men. Thankful for all the men in our church and everything they do to help us out. I'm trying to think that's everything I got. If I miss something, please make sure to check your bulletin. We also have the newsletter that's out there. I actually had it last week. Make sure you get that. That's got a lot of information in there as well. If you would please stand with me this morning and as always we like to take this opportunity to the point of service where we have the opportunity to uh, to, uh, to say this creed, this affirmation of faith which is basically us being able to proclaim who we are and why we believe the way we do and um, we should never take this opportunity for granted. We should never take it uh, for granted anytime, especially not only doing it here but also outside of these walls. So this morning, let's uh, share in that creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you would please remain standing for our time of worship this morning. morning. Join with me as I pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We would at this time take the opportunity to greet each other in the Lord this morning.
要约他。
come to that part of the service where we have an opportunity to give back a little bit of what God's been able to bless us with. And, you know, as you saw earlier, you know, part of what this church invests in with our youth and part of what it invests in with all the other areas of ministry, you know, it takes, it takes a lot sometimes, maybe, maybe more than we realize, to do some of the things that we're called to do. And in order for us to do it to the best of our ability, sometimes it causes for us to respond. And, you know, that's the one thing that I am extremely grateful for about this church is, like, I don't think there's any been a t- ever been a time since I've been here that when I've asked for something, I've been told no. And I think that that's one thing that makes us stand out for the right reasons and makes us go out and do a lot of great things for this, uh, for this community and also things for the kingdom. So... Uh, this morning as we get ready to give, just be mindful of that, that your giving, your giving makes a difference. Your giving is sowing seeds to, to ages from young to old, and it makes a big difference. So let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give back a portion of what you bless us with, God. And sometimes we say that, Lord, we think of a portion as being small, but Lord, maybe a portion is a, a sacrifice, a sacrificial giving, Lord, of of something maybe beyond the norm, Lord. Lord, you have always been able to take what has been given and, and blessed, Lord, and we pray that you will continue to do that. We thank you for all the things that you're doing in this church. We thank you for the, the excitement and the energy that we have, Lord, to go out and do. Lord, as those that are trying to decide which area that they want to put their investment in and they want to put their commitment to, Lord, I pray that you would just speak to their hearts. If they're still undecided this morning, I pray that you would reach out to them, Lord. And maybe they realize that they have that opportunity to serve. So, Lord, just bless everything that is received this morning, Lord, and continue to be with us as we go through worship. In Jesus' name, amen.
you could please now stand with us as we present God's tithes and our offerings. be seated and children can be dismissed for children's church. Good morning. Um, while I've got just a minute. I don't normally like to talk up here, but I did want to kind of reiterate something Lee talked about, um, about the In His Steps. Um, when we were at Big Stuff, we had a chance to go and they had a leader lab, so the adults got to go and be away from the kids and, you know, kind of feel ourselves. And um, one of the things he talked about was volunteering and how we, the adults, are supposed to mentor and share with these kids so you need to sign up somewhere you know something you can do in this church the kids will see you volunteering and it it rubs off on them um i met a couple they were probably their late 70s 80s it was their seventh year as big stuff volunteers or you know taking their youth and i thought mm, there's no age limit <laughs> They were right there, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, worshiping, late, loud music, just hands lifted. So everybody, regardless of age, can volunteer somewhere. All right, now I'm going to read. Um, John chapter 10, verses 7 through 18. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them in also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We, uh, you know, we're very blessed in this church with our young people. And I know you're probably saying, wait, youth Sunday's not till August 14th. Why are you talking about young people again? Well, it's kind of what y'all pay me to do, so just have to get used to it. Um, but our young people are frontline warriors for the kingdom of God. Because not only do we have kids that are in this room, in this sanctuary, on the front lines up here leading you guys in worship, but they're out there making an impact. And I got to see it firsthand at this big old camp on a big old beach in Panama City Beach, Florida. If you throw that picture up for me real quick, Ty. You may not be able to see it very clearly, but right in the middle of that group, that's a group of our kids that were down there. And right in the very middle of the group is a kid named Ian. Ian was down to big stuff. He was part of a group of 90 kids that came down on some of the charter buses from a little suburb outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Tenth grader, I believe. Um, might have been eleventh grader. Um, but he, uh, he was actually in the service with us, and he was actually sitting near us on Wednesday night. And Wednesday night was a very special service because it was, um, it was a special invitation service. And he was by himself, really. Um, our kids were kind of spread out over the course of two or three rows, but he was like right there in the middle of us. And um, when they had the invitation time, he was led to give his life to the Lord. And he was there able to stand up in front of all those kids, all those adults, and say that he knows who his God is, and he knows in whom he believes. And he gave his life over to the Lord right there on that Wednesday night in Panama City Beach. But that's not where the story ends for him as far as his trip to big stuff, because our kids went down to the gazebo. They have this big gazebo down there in between the two hotels. And at night, a lot of the kids like to go down there. And our kids like to go down there. And we got some kids that are very talented, that can play, uh, play guitar and stuff like that. So they went down to this picnic table, sat at the picnic table, and started pulling out worship songs. And they started playing worship, just singing together and playing. And I'm standing there and just listening and whatnot. And I look over to the left, and here comes this kid walking to the gazebo, and it's Ian. And he walks over there, and I kind of greet him. He somehow found us in the midst of all those kids there. And when he stood up in the service, that group of 90 kids that he came with were nowhere to be found. But our kids were right there. And our kids greeted him with handshakes and hugs. And they loved on him in that moment. So somehow or another, he found us. Maybe because he heard Fogel trying to sing. I don't know. But um, he found us, and he tracked us down in that gazebo. And he come over there, and we started talking. And I just tried to introduce myself a little bit, talk to him and everything. And the kids are still singing, you know. They're smiling at him and everything, but they're, you know, they're, they're singing. And so I'm talking with him a little bit, and um, he was telling me a little bit about his story. And he was telling me how nervous he was. I said, why are you nervous, man? I said, I know it's a big crowd, but that's a big step, big decision. He said, he was nervous about going home. I said, he lives with his dad. And it's just him and his dad, and his dad's an alcoholic. And he said, his dad doesn't believe in God. So he was scared. He didn't know how his dad was going to react when he got home. And how he was going to react to the news that he got saved. And so I just started talking with him a little bit and kind of talked to him, walked him through some things and just told him about, asked him about his group. I said, I said where, where's, where's the rest of your group at? 
And they were all spread out everywhere and everything. I said, do you got anybody in your group that you can really connect with? Anybody that you can buddy up with? He said, yeah, there's a few. And so we just kept on talking and talking. And every time I'm talking, I'm sitting here and I'm just like, you know, my heart's breaking for him because, you know, he obviously was in need, a greater need, not only in the need of giving his life over the Lord, but he was in need. And I honestly felt like he never did come out and say it, but I almost felt like he, he had this mindset of, does anybody care about me? But it was amazing to me to see our kids reach out and show him the love of Jesus the way they did. And so I pulled him over to the table and I said, guys, I said, this is our buddy Ian. I said, we need to pray for him. And so we circled up, put our hands on him, we prayed for him right there in that gazebo, 11.30 at night, ocean in the background. And prayed for our new brother in Christ. Not for show or tell, not for me to tell you a fancy story, but just for the all... Just for the basic reason of the fact of we want him to know what it feels like to be in the family of God and what it means to be loved and through us how God could love on him. And so the next whole day, I mean, he was with us, brother. He was with us. He found us in the, in the, in the convention center where we were sitting. He found us at breakfast. He found us at lunch. He found us at dinner. And he found us before we got on the bus and rolled out Friday morning. Because of love. Because our kids took that time out to love on him. And to say, hey, we're not really sure about who you came down with, but we do know who you're going home with, and you're going home with Jesus. And that was the most powerful thing that I could see hands-on just to give you a small glimpse and a testimony of how much I love the kids in this church. We have kids that sing up here. We have kids that are actually going tonight to another church, part of the Youth Center Praise Band. They're going to sing tonight. They're going to be leading Youth Week in a couple of weeks, two times during that week. We've got kids that are on the front lines, church, and they're being the hands and feet, and they're ministering to other kids, whether we realize it or not. And that's something to be shoutful for. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to be excited about. Because I can tell you, I know our kids pretty good, and a lot of them can get really tired and cranky in a heartbeat. And they don't necessarily like to be around each other all the time. But in that moment, in that time frame, there we were to meet, meet with that kid as he, as he had that awesome moment in his life. And so he posted that picture. That's all right. You, he posted that picture. Well, I put it back up. Push it back up. He posted that picture, and I want you to read what he says here. You may not be able to read it. I'll read it to you. He says, hanging out with these awesome people all week and making a new memory for them and myself. They're a great group of people and will always have a place inside of my heart. Big stuff. The prime life, friendship, new friends. I don't know if we'll ever see him again. We may see him next year. I don't know. But we all, if only we reach out to one person, that, that's awesome, y'all. That's awesome. So what does that mean for this morning and for what I wanted to share with you guys? Well, absolutely everything. Because maybe this morning, maybe there's somebody here who wonders himself, does anybody care about me? Does anybody know what I'm going through? Does anybody understand the struggles I'm dealing with? Do they understand the struggles I'm having with my belief in God right now in my life? My heart was breaking for him as I was driving home. Because I knew that when he got home, he wasn't going to have a welcome home party like everybody else might would have. I, I finally was able to reach his youth pastor, found his youth pastor and talked with him. But, um, you know, even this morning talking about him and seeing a picture of my heart's praying for him because I don't know what kind of life he's got right now. Here it is Sunday. But like I said, he's got Jesus now. And I pray that the people around him and that youth group and those kids can, can reach out to him. He plays the drums, uh, plays in the high school band. So um, if, you're, if you're having some quiet time today, say a prayer for Ian, if you don't mind. Um, this morning I wanted to look at a piece of scripture. The title of the sermon is, Does Anywhere Care About Me? But basically the way I wanted to tie it in this morning is I wanted to tie it in from the book of Psalm. And it's actually one of my favorite chapters. It's Psalm 139. And we're going to look at a couple of verses here, but 
before we get to the scripture that I posted, I want, I want to give you the, the first part of this scripture just to kind of set this up. Because as it's being written here, I want you to think about this, and I want you to hear this this morning, because I don't know how many of you read this recently or if you read it before, but I want you to really hear about it, because sharing what I just shared with you and hearing the Psalms this morning, talking about a good, good Father and God of wonders, maker of all heaven and earth, I want you to listen to this this morning. It says, this is in verse 1 through 6 of Psalm 139. It's not on the screen. Just listen to me. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me, me in behind and before. You have laid your own hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. We serve a great big God who knows our very innermost being of who we are. Sometimes when we scratch our heads about who we are and what we're doing, He's already understanding and he knows who we are. He knows what we're dealing with. He knows what we're going through. He knows our hearts inside and out. He knows it better than anybody, any best friend, any husband, any wife, anybody. He knows it better than anybody else because he is God. He is the maker of heaven and earth. And you want to know how big God is in your life. You may think of this as like, does he really understand truly what's, what I'm going through right now? Is he big enough to handle all my fears? Does he really care? about what I'm dealing with? Is he powerful enough to do something about it? Obviously for that kid, there was something powerful that got a hold of him. Because I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of courage to stand up in front of 1,500 people and make a statement like that. But this, what, you want, what you need to understand this morning is that God knows everything about you. He knows you intimately. He carefully observed and examined you so that he knows everything about you. He knows your joys. He knows your hurts. He knows your fears. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your limitations. He knows your faults. He knows your fallen nature. He knows your words, your deeds, your thoughts, and all your motives. He knows everything about every one of us. There is no use putting up this front because God sees right through it because he knows us very intimately, and yet he still loves us. And yet he still loves us. It's no maybe in front of that. Maybe he might love us. He might could love us. said, yet he loves us, despite of everything that we listed right there that he knows about. It. He knows everything that you do. There's nothing that happens in your life that he doesn't know about. He doesn't sit up there with a remote control switching channels when he gets bored with your life, looking at somebody else's life. He looks at your life and he knows your life. He knows what's going on. He knows everything that you think. He knows the very number of hairs that are on your head. Now, I know for some of us here, it's a less number than most, but me and Big Brother, we right there, ain't we, Brother? But he still knows the hairs that are on our head. He knows everything about us. He knows your future. He knows your future. He knows your past, too. But your past, as we heard this past week, your past is just the future with the lights on. And here's something else, because we sometimes forget how much he truly does know, we, we tend to put all of our stock and all of our value in what other people think they know about us. And we, we tend to put all our focus in on what other people's opinions are about us. And sometimes we let other people define who we are. Let me share with you this very powerful statement that we got this past week, and it's, it's powerful and it relates to this morning. God had a purpose long enough before anyone else had an opinion. Let me read that one more time. God had a purpose long enough before anyone else had an opinion. God knew you. He knew you who you were. So why are we living for other people's opinions? Why are we basing our everyday -day life about other people's opinions? Why do we wake up wondering what such and such thought or something somebody said why do we go to sleep thinking about it? Let me just put this out there. Why do, we go from, why do we go from church to church to church worrying about what somebody says? There's only one opinion that matters, church, and it's the opinion of the God, the Father, who loved you and knows you and knows everything about you. That's the only opinion that matters, y'all. He knows your future. He puts his hand around us. He protects us. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to look. 
We don't have to run from Him. Our very body is a masterpiece of design that He specifically created. This is going to blow you away, but I'm just going to read this to you because I was reading this the other day and it's fascinating. Body is made up of this. 60 trillion cells, 100 billion nerve cells, 100,000 miles of nerve fiber. Your brain has 7 million nerve cells to record what you see and hear. The best computers in the world can equal your brain. Your skin has more than 2 million tiny sweat glands to keep your body at an even temperature. Your body contains 100,000 miles of blood vessels. Your heart pumps over 250,000 gallons of blood over a 70-year period. No fuel pump can come close to that. The lining of your stomach, it contains 35 million glands secreting juices which aid the process of digestion. And these are just a few of all the processes that go on within our body. In 24 hours, your body accomplishes a lot. Your heart beats over 104,000 times. You breathe over 23,000 times. You inhale 438 cubic feet of air. Now, I know some of you are not science majors, but you stay with me. You just digest almost 3.5 pounds of food and 2.9 quarts of liquid. You speak over 16,000 words. You have 208 bones, 300 plus for babies. You move 750 muscles. Now, not, you were probably like me and didn't realize all that. But guess who did know it? God. Have we ever stopped and just given him thanks just for making us? Just for allowing us to be here? And just said, thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. And then we get to the scripture it's talking about here in 139. It talked about how God searched us. And we're going to pick up in verse 13. We can follow along if you don't have a Bible with you. And this goes just to kind of cement what we're just talking about here. It says in verse 13, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together and in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Church, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. That matters. That matters. We were made for a purpose. We were not made for somebody's opinion. We were made for a bigger purpose, a purpose outside of us, outside of ourselves, a purpose to go out through these doors and go out within these walls and also go out outside of the walls to be something bigger and greater for someone who is bigger and greater. And all he needs is just one person. He can do a lot through one, but with many, he can do a bunch. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. How bright are our lights this morning? Have our lights dimmed a little bit? Are we struggling with the very essence of who we are? And this goes all across the board. This goes for teenagers all the way up, no matter how old you are this morning. We sung that song about the good, good father. We sung that song a lot this week. And I love it. I love what it says. I love the message of it. It's just who you are. His very nature is love, y'all. God's very nature is love. He loved us so much that even in our messed up craziness and ways of life, he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for us because he loved and for every tear that you've cried, for every heart that's broken, for every scar that you have, for every hurt that you've ever experienced, for every loss, he's been right there through it every step of the way. Sometimes we just don't take the time to realize it. And we don't take enough time to give him thanks for it. This kid Ian was, was searching. He was searching for real love. He was searching for something that wasn't artificial. He was certain, searching for something that he could physically get his hands around and latch on to. And it's no discrediting the rest of that group that he came down with because it was a big group. 
But just to know that God knew who he was out of that big group of 1,500 people. And God knew how to direct his steps to where he needed to be that night. And God knew that he needed to impress upon our hearts to lift him up and pray for him and love on him. And God knew that he was going to be sitting there with us every rest of the moment on that Thursday. He already knew. But yet, sometimes we still act surprised. We get surprised when when he does do things in our life. We get surprised at, at the fact of wondering... Man, there is people that really do care. So that brings us to the takeaway this morning. And the takeaway is, is, basically, is basically this for us. First and foremost, we've got to understand that we've got to accept his love for us, no matter who we are, no matter what we're going through, no matter where we've been, no matter where we are. He loves us. So we need to go out and be the one for the one because he loves us. That's why it matters. That's why church matters. That's why being in church matters. That's why being the church outside the walls matter. That's what it's about, y'all. And listen, you don't have to have no big parade-type experience to have a celebration. We celebrated under that gazebo, and there was only about 15 of us. And I don't know how many are in here this morning, over 150, 160 people, But I'm going to tell you, 160 people with that love assured in their life can go out and make a big difference in this world. And you have those opportunities out there on the walls. You have those opportunities to be in ministries in this church to make a difference. The very moment, the very moment that you think you can't make a difference or you're not making a difference, you're you're opening up the door for the enemy to take away in there. You're giving him that chance to take away that joy from you. I'm telling you, don't let him do that. You said, Lee, man, I've done my bit for king and country. I got to breathe. I got to back up. I got to take the, the foot off the pedal a little bit. But what if there was one more person that you needed to reach out to? What if that one person is somebody that's sitting right next to you or sitting behind you or sitting across from you? Or maybe who's not here that needs to be here? It's something to think about this morning. But it's also something to celebrate the fact that the God of heaven and earth knows us. He knows us. He knows our hearts. And if you're struggling with anything this morning, if you've been struggling this week, if you've had anything that's going on, if you're wrestling with a decision to make out there about serving, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this morning, this is a great opportunity just to surrender to him. To give over your heart. To give over your life. Sometimes we have to die to ourselves before we can live life. And live life to the fullest. We heard the scripture that was read this morning by Miss Diane. He came to give us life, but not just life. Give us life more abundantly, to the fullest. That's what we talked about this week at camp. He wants to give us the ultimate life. But the enemy is always going to be around. Like a thief in the night. He's looking to steal, kill, and destroy. He's looking to take your joy. He's he's looking to keep you buried down. He doesn't want your voice to be heard. The one thing I challenged our students with this week was when you come back home, don't get lost in the shadows. Don't get misplaced. Don't go back into being in silent mode. Continue to be loud. Continue to be proud. Continue to be what you need to be. But be the one for the one because he loves you. That's what we need to take away this morning. So in a moment when we sing and we have this opportunity invitation and maybe you're struggling and maybe you have something that you're trying to figure out, maybe it's something with the ministry to serve in or maybe it's something that's going on outside here, whatever the case may be, this altar is going to be open for you. There's an opportunity for you to pray, opportunity for you to give that over to God. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know, maybe, just maybe it's an opportunity this morning for us just to give him our total heart. You said, hey, I've done that before. I've been there, done that, sang the song, rode the truck, everything. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I don't think, it's, I don't think it ever can be old enough to, to just give yourself over to God again and be reminded about the blessings in your life. I'm reminded about it every day. 
there was never going to be a doubt in my mind when I got home from this trip this past week that my kids were not going to love on me when I got home. And, buddy, they attacked me like Tasmanian devils. Knocked me down, jumped on me, and I loved it. Don't you ever worry about if somebody doesn't care about you. First of all, there are people in this room that can care about you and do care about you, so let me just put that out there. There are people in this room that love you. This family, this church loves each other. We go through our hard times, we go through our difficult times, but at the end of the day, we find a way to love each other. Sometimes we have to love each other despite our differences, but we still find a way to love. And sometimes I think we need to get back to the celebration of the times that we love more so than the wondering and the curiosity of why we fail. Because to love can do so many things in someone's life. And I'm thankful that I have just a small, small amount of time during the course of a year to be able to show love, not only to kids here, but kids out around, be able to show kids down in Panama City. I talked to some other kids that wasn't even in our group. I'll be sharing this coming week every morning at Rice Baptist Church in front of 250 students before we go out and do the hands and feet of Christ. There's always going to be one person that you need to reach out to. But understand that God loves you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity we have to, uh, to hear from your word this morning, God. Lord, I pray that we would be reminded and encouraged about how much you care for us, love. And you, and you love us so much that you, that you give your only son to die for us, but you also love us so much that your grace and forgiveness can make us new every day. So, Lord, if there's someone here in this building this morning, if there's someone who's going through some difficulties and some pains and some struggles, God, I just pray that you would be able to meet them where they're at and that you would be able to just show them that love. And maybe through somebody else, Lord, maybe there's somebody here that needs to see your love needs to see your love through someone else. May we never forget to be a light for you, God. And we just thank you for everything you're doing and what you're going to continue to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I have to this, but uh, the verse that he put up earlier is one of the verses that, before I knew he was doing it, it's one of the verses that I have focused on this week and that God has really spoken to me through this verse. And, um, you know, it's just good to know that no matter what I do, because I know I can be pretty messed up sometimes, and, um, but no matter what I do and no matter what I go through, that God still loves me. And God will always love me no matter what I do. And so this morning, even though he knows what you're going through, he knows your faults, he knows what you have done, he still wants you to lay those down to lay those down at his feet, to lay those down at his altar. So this morning, we offer you the chance to come up to this altar and lay that down and to give him your heart fully. So let's stand together.
more than any other kid I know. Can you tell them how much you love them? You want to tell them? Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but he loves. Go back over there to Mama. He loves so much. He's wide open. And it's okay. And God loves him just the way he is. He loves me just the way I am. And he loves every single one of you the way you are. And if you don't understand that this morning, all you have to do is look at him to understand it. Come here. Come here. So we're going we're gonna to pray, okay? So you hold your hands out to him. So we just got, we're going to leave out of this place today and we're going to go. We're going to go with understanding of how much he loves us and how much we can love others and how much we're truly blessed, church. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Come on. And we're going to do something a little bit different this morning. I want to hear that chorus one more time. Lord, I give you my heart. And I really want you all to sing that out like you are giving your heart to Jesus.
Lord.